Hi and welcome. In today's video, I will be talking about the transition from academia to the industry in the context of data science, of course. I'll be explaining two different scenarios that you could have of someone in academia wanting to go to data science in the industry. And also I will provide three different tips based on the experience that I had before uh, when I was looking for a job, both in Brazil and also here in the United States. And this video is of course made for people that have already left academia, have already left the university, or that they are towards the end of their courses, be it a master's degree or a doctorate degree. And when I'm talking about masters, I'm usually talking about a more academic masters, not an MBA, for example. Also, I think it will be useful for you to watch the other video I have in the channel. It is necessary to have a doctorate degree in order to do data science. I'm making it available here on the top of the video and also in the end of the video and as a link in the description of the video. My name is Felipe. This is the Data Science Bits channel. Please subscribe and click on the bell button to receive notifications with every video that I post and follow me on LinkedIn. The first scenario I want to talk about in this video is when you are doing research or you have done research in your master's or doctorate that's already related to data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence, or statistics. It can be a more fundamental research in these topics or applied research in some science topics that make heavy use of statistics or heavy use of machine learning tools. For example, you could be researching biomedics or biophysics or biostatistics and you are making heavy use of machine learning techniques and even deep learning to do your research. It will be really easy for you in the industry to justify that you have that knowledge and you are able to apply that. In this case, you can be applying to job positions that are research related in the industry. It could be in technology companies such as Amazon, Facebook, Twitter, Google, or for example, biomedical uh, industry related companies and things like that. And there is high chance that you will be successful in your job search. And also in this first scenario, you can also be applying to data science and data analyst position uh, because you can do also the more applied uh, work. But don't forget that the most important skill is not really the programming languages and specific methods that you know, it's actually problem solving in this case. Now the second scenario is if you are from a STEM field, so you have done masters or doctorate that's academic and research related, and your research was not focused on the topics that we discussed in the first scenario. You have all the skills necessary, you know a bit of statistics, you know a bit of calculus, linear algebra, you have done complex projects. The real possibility for you in the industry is being a data analyst, a data scientist, it can go to roles related also to data engineering, it depends a lot and let's be honest that these names will change with time. So in principle you will be doing more applied tasks and in your work you are going to do a lot of data exploration, probably you will do a lot of model development and even deploying your models. This is about product, maybe you get a job position that's actually a consultancy role. In this case, you'll be visiting customers, you'll be understanding their data, understanding their problems. Now that we understood these two different scenarios, let's talk about some tips that I have for you. And I need to be honest that because I come from academia, this is always hunting me. So I always need to explain to people what were my academic experiences and how this helps me solve different problems for businesses. You need to always be prepared to defend your curriculum, defend your background, because some people see it as a caveat. Some people will see it as a downside, while some other people will see this as an advantage, but you never know. You always need to be prepared. The first tip is the most obvious one, is about programming languages and logic. So, it doesn't matter what you used in your research. For example, I was using uh, MATLAB, Maple, and Mathematica. You need basically to know Python, R package, and SQL. And you can choose between Python and R. It doesn't really matter. I won't enter into this fight. 
What's important to, is to know one of them. And the Python language is more suitable for production environments. And SQL is one language that's usually undervalued. And many other querying systems where you are going to be able to access data have the advantage of using SQL syntax. So in principle, you can always use SQL syntax in many different contexts. So this is a very valuable skill. We need to remember that these things evolve with time. So don't get attached too much to a single language. Just be aware of what the market is asking for in the job positions openings. The second tip is that you need to learn the language of your interviewers, the language of business. That's very different from the academic language, the research related language. And in the end, this is about showing to your interviewer that your knowledge from academia is transferable to business. So what this is in practice? So imagine that your interviewer is asking about um, like predictions, making predictions using advanced models. So in this case, a very academic person would answer something like, okay, I have experience with lasso regression. Period. It's very common for someone that has been doing research to get used to that language and think that everyone will know what they are talking about. And usually in research and papers that we're writing, you want to be concise. So there are some names that really encompass a lot of knowledge in there. So when you are talking about regression and uh, lasso regression, for example, in this case, you already have a lot of information in this single sentence, but this is not enough to get you a job unless your interviewer is already a very technical person, but it's often not the case. So what could you say in this case? Instead of that, you could say something like, I have experience in predictive modeling to, for example, predict prices. And I have experience also using a specific method that ignores all the variables, all the information that's not really useful for the model. So you only use variables that are really, really important and that makes sense for you. The last tip I want to provide is to not undervalue your previous work. In reality, when you are talking to industry, to industry people, you will realize that these projects are actually very complex, that there is a lot of elements in these projects that are transferable skills to other projects that are business related. And as I said in previous tips, you need to adjust the language, for example, to make it clear what you have done and what are your skills. And in the end, you are a problem solver for the industry. So you need to show to them that you have solved different problems that were not obvious. And usually in research, they are open-ended and you were able to go from beginning to end and you solve that. And there are things that we often overlook. Usually in research, in the academic setting, especially if, if you have gone through a doctorate, for example, you could have uh, international experience going to conferences, uh, making calls with other research groups. And this is really valuable because you can demonstrate that you can collaborate, you can speak English fluently, depending on the context, this is really important to show. Uh, giving presentations, oral presentations, explaining work. Um, many people also have outreach experience, so you have explained very complex projects to uh, a general audience, for example. This is really, really important. Communication is one of the key skills for data science. That's it, I hope you enjoyed. Please send me questions and comments on YouTube. And also, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's called Data Science Bits. And also, don't forget to follow me on LinkedIn, where you can also send me direct messages or add comments to the posts. See you in the next video.